Hi everyone, how are you doing today? Good, I hope. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen some of the things that I've been um, getting done over the last few weeks. The nav pod is in. It's got a few teething troubles, uh, which I need to iron out, but it works fine. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with it, and uh, I should be covering that on a video. The colour on this is very strange today. It's a very blue colour cast. Anyway. Uh, so let's let's have a think about what else is going on. So I've just put um, today an induction kit into the MR2. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. Now remember, I'm building my MR2 for me. It's not to wring the last one horsepower of performance out of it. It's for my enjoyment. And um, as you'll see shortly, because I'm going to cover the induction kit installed today, but in a slightly different way, which I hope people will find a little more helpful. Uh, it's not behind the battery where is the preferred option uh, it's uh, out towards the back of the car now um, why have I done that well uh, there was an eBay kit that uh, piqued my interest it was about 30 pounds I think which was super cheap it was worth that for the bit of pipe alone with the welded uh, math sensor port, port on it. I'm probably going to get comments about oh, what about the veins in the air box and about swirl and blah 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 blah. That's cool, it, you know, and I understand where you're coming from with that, but uh, it's on the car, it works fine. Um, I would say, I don't know if it's a placebo, but there seems to be a bit more mid range on it. Uh, what I've actually done is I've taken the air box and everything out, obviously, to fit it. And we'll just have a look at that now. There's all of my white line goodies in the background there, look. So rather than take it out in the car, where it's quite difficult to see when you're working, taking things out, I thought I'd show you just on the bench here how this thing comes out ready to fit the kit that I've fitted. And then once I've gone over this, we'll go and have a look at the car. So you are going to need to do this, a um, Phillips or crosshead uh, screwdriver, uh, a flat blade screwdriver is useful and you're definitely going to need a 10mm socket with uh, an extension bar and I'll tell you for why is because this this bit hit, um, hang on, it can be helpful if I showed you, there is a bolt here that comes in here and um, you'll find that easier because of the other things that are around in the engine to um, have a good good long uh, extension there to clear everything to be able to take that out. I needed a bit pair of pliers to bend the bracket that um, comes with the kit that I bought uh, into shape to be able to secure the end of the filter. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is the standard kit and I've kind of assembled it here. So um, when you're looking at it in your MR2, this is pretty much what you're going to be presented with, with all the other bits and bobs um, around. You've got the induction pipe that leads off of the, uh, you've got the side scoop feed into that. Then you've got this pipe here that then leads into the air box and there's a screw here that you'll need to take out. And that um, on mine, although I don't think it was the original one, um, that was a crosshead screw. So unscrew that. Um, there's a rubber uh, thing just underneath, like a rubber bung or sort of holder, um, just underneath the coolant tank where this locates as well. So take that out. Uh, you'll be able to take the screw out. You'll be able to wiggle that out and then basically just manhandle that out. And pull that away and then that's that done because you've got to take this bit off to be able to free this lower part so the next thing you'll need to do now this hole here is where the math sensor is my advice to you is leave the math sensor in until you're ready to fit it you've done everything else and you're ready to fit it into uh, the new pipe or whatever it is you're using because if it's in the housing here it's protected it is quite delicate um, sensor that once you take that out the wire sensor parts of it are exposed so do bear that in mind so there'll be a clamp here which I think is either a 10 mm um, socket uh, but it's definitely a crosshead screwdriver so you'll undo that um, slide that back and then on the back here uh, you'll have another one of those uh, with either a crosshead or I think it's a 10 mm socket 
uh, loosen that off and sort of slide that round. Um, here is the holder that holds um, part of the uh, pipe work. I think it's the vacuum pipe work. Um, so just pull that out. That just sort of slots in there, so it pulls out. And when we're in the in engine bay, I'll sort of show you those parts. But um, perhaps watch this video with your engine bay with you if you like so then you can reference the bits i'm talking about um, and then hopefully that'll be clearer but this will be out that how i'm doing it here is going to be able to give you a much better view if you like of all the catches and things so this clamp off this clamp off remove that and then um, this with a bit of uh, jiggery pokery that will then lift away this is the same pipe i believe that's used on the corolla uh, and there's a bung on the end there, so it's not connected to anything. Um, so lift that out of the way, you don't need that. So then you're left with the air box just in the car. Now, um, around coming around here and here is um, the overflow for uh, the coolant feed. I think it's the overflow it might actually be the bottom feed that feeds it into the coolant system i can't quite remember but in any case just the, the hose will pop out there and pop out there and just drop that um, to the side and then you'll find that down here so coming around to this side here there's another hose that's clipped in there so pop that out and drop that to the bottom and then there's another hose that same hose runs around there so pop that out the back there then with your flat blade screwdriver we need to release this lid so pop off these two catches that one there and that one there there we go and because the pipe part is gone um, this will then lift out now this on the on the back of this box here it's hinged it won't just lift off so you've got to sort of lift it off and then pull it away but it's obviously in a in its own sort of tight space so there'll be a bit of uh, wiggle there to um, remove that oh just one last thing there is one last thing to remove here and that is the just here there's a retainer clip there for the math sensor cabling the cabling comes around here the clip holds it there and then it clips into uh, the math sensor so just pop that out there so then you'll lift that out of the way and then you'll be left with the bottom part of the air box so lift your filter out lift the filter out and there's two fixing points this is a 10 mil bolt here and that there's like um, a, a bracket just underneath uh, the back right corner of the battery that this uh, has got a screw point to bolt into and then there's another one here and this here this this part here sort of slots into a rubber uh, mount there so it's sort of mounted there 10 mil there 10 mil there take them out and then you'll be um, sort of manhandling that out as best you can and then the whole thing will lift out and then you'll be ready to fit this kit now I don't know if this kit is still available because I've had it for a while um, but let's go to the car now we'll have a look at it and um, I'll explain uh, how that went in and the fitting for it was very simple Okay, so this is the kit here. So uh, I reused the, the adjustable bracket there. And you just see that in there. And then it comes with a silicon coupler. Um, I did have to uh, put this in some hot water to make it pliable to go over the intake um, opening. And then clamp that on there. Put the pipe in, clamp the pipe with the supplied Jubilee uh, clip bracket and comes around here 
and then the MAF sensor went in there and then I'm just down here it's the bracket that I made to hold it and it's pretty sturdy there and then the filter just goes in there so that's how we're looking now um, yes there's going to be a certain level of heat soak from the manifold to this side of the bracket I am going to make a heat shield which I'll bring down and around and um, if we can I'm not sure if we can see that in there Let's see if I can zoom in a bit No, it's a bit dark. I'm not sure we can see. Anyway, the intake that comes around, I'm going to extend that round and to the um, the filter. So I sort of bathe it in the cool air being brought in from the side of the car there. And um, yeah, I'll, no heat, I'll heat shield this now. You know, I'm not racing this car or anything, so I don't. It's a stock engine. Um, I've got the ex stainless exhaust to go on it, but there's nothing else. Um, you know, it might be too ZZ or turboed or something in future, but at the moment I just wanted to hear the engine a bit more. So this is the pipe that I was talking about that clips round the airbox. So I'm going to make up a, a bracket or something just to hold that up so it's not hanging under its own weight there. Um, the, the bracket here came a little bit close for my liking. I mean, it's fine. But um, the coolant line that comes up here, um, I wasn't happy and I didn't want any chafage on there. So what I did was I cut a bit of silicone hose and just pushed it over there, cut it there, spliced it underneath so it pushed on. And then that can just sit on there as a guard to protect any chafing on there. And if I see any chafing on there, then I know I need to do something about that. There's plenty of clearance away from the battery. Um, this is the, um, I think it's the emissions, I think it might be emissions under there. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is make a bracket for that to sit on and then I'll probably bolt that to where that bolts to under here. I'll make a bracket that comes down and then that can clamp to it there. So that holds that, I don't like that just flopping around. I'll make that, I need to replace that bit of hose anyway that's starting to split there. Uh, what else was there that I needed to tell you about? I think that's it really, it was a fairly simple install. Um, I will do a sound um, video for you of how it changes uh, the exhaust note. Uh, it's pretty normal I think up to about two and a half thousand revs and then if you sort of really give it some uh, and over that it really starts um, giving you some noise it sort of sounds a little bit more like a sports car I think so if you've got any questions now oh one thing I will say is normally if you can see here I mean there's a fair amount of space down the back here that would normally be or that is the most advantageous part if you're gonna if you're looking to put a, a system in for mounting the filter because it's well away from the heat sources of the manifold and the exhaust and um, apparently that's the coolest area in terms of temperature that is not like yeah super cool uh, to put your filter uh, however I didn't want to spend 300 pound on a kit at this point um, I may even take this off in time and put the stock back on this isn't going to gain you any power um, Toyota designed the stock system very well uh, it's more for just a bit of noise for a fun factor that's really all you're doing it for. Um, some people have reported with certain kits it releases a couple of horsepower. I don't know about that. I mean, another option I could could have is I could uh, get a coupler and some more pipe and extend that so the filter is then uh, down in this area here. But um, we'll see how we go. I'm quite happy with it. Gives me better access for for service things like re, re greasing. Um, I don't know if you can see that there, yeah, re-greasing the gear linkage points there, things like that. I've got the brass uh, bearing links on, it gives you a much firmer shift. So yeah, I think that's about it. If you've got any questions, leave me a comment. 
Uh, if you've put a different induction kit in, or perhaps you've made your own one, um, certainly let us know about it in the comments. I'll be interested to hear. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, thanks for staying with me. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.